Warning, the following communications are not authorized. Please disable your signals and report to your local re-education center immediately. Failure to comply will result in immediate reprimand and capital punishment. Now there's a guy here in Canada who's been a speaker at the big protests. He's got about 90,000 followers on Instagram. His name is Chris Guy. And he told me, there's a, a video of me and him on Twitter it's gotten a million views uh, to toot my own horn here. And it's him predicting the lockdown procedure that's going to happen. He says there's going to be a lockdown for the summer. They're going to lift it a bit and they're going to come back with another lockdown for the second wave. They're going to say that's not going to work. And he was right about all that. And then I said, Chris, give me your next big prediction. And he said, in a couple of months, they're going to say the vaccine is not enough. You have to get the vaccine every year. And I was starting to be like, oh, he was wrong about that one. Until this week, Johnson & Johnson said, this vaccine is going to be annual, you guys. And I guess that's sort of predictable, you guys, because giant CEO from big companies says, buy my product more. Is that really that surprising, you guys? Absolutely not. Um, well, look, I kind of knew that this whole thing was bogus when they said that you were your antibodies only lasted for four months and that Trump could get it again or that some people could get this more than once. I've never heard of a virus in my entire life that you get the exact same virus more than once. Like, I, I don't know. I've never heard of this. Like, you get chicken pox once, you get things once, and then you're immune. You develop the antibodies that are in your body. And that's the idea with the vaccine, right? Um, I can understand it with, like, a flu shot because there's a different strain of the flu each year. But isn't that basically what this is? COVID-19, the boogeyman, is basically the new <laughs> version of the flu. And it's just going to keep evolving and it's going to be with us forever. And now they want to force you to get a new vaccine for this every single year. Um, but this is really what I've been warning against. I feel like I've been screaming from the rafters, like medical tyranny is coming. And this is what we're going to face is that we're getting into this situation now where they, want to, they, they can't necessarily force you to take the vaccine, but they can prevent you from going into normal American life. And they, they, they've already started doing this in California. Kids in California have to get all these vaccines in order to go to school. And now they've said that uh, if you work at or attend any of the UCs in California, any of the state schools, you're required to get a flu vaccine. So next thing you know, they're probably going to require you to get a COVID vaccine. Then you're going to have to get the flu vaccine next year. And what's shameful is there are people out there who have allergies to vaccines, who have had adverse reactions to vaccines, people who had been working at the University of California for many, many years, and all of a sudden they are forced to have to quit their job because they are not willing to take a vaccine that could make them very, very sick. So I just have to wonder, like, where does it end? And at what point do we have a right to say, no, I'm not going to put this medicine in my body? Uh, you know, I, I, I started out last year, I was not anti-vax by any means. But it's very frightening, and I do not want to live under a government that tells me what medication I am required to take, that I am required to put in my body. Um, it, it's just, it's wrong, and you have to wonder, like, where is your freedom? Also, well, what a lot of people think, sorry, Eric, but what a lot of people seem to think that's happening, at least up here, is that with all the tickets being given out, I don't know what it's like where you guys live, but everything's a ticket. Um, Gathering outside was a ticket. Too many people in your house, ticket. Uh, <laughs> opening your restaurant, ticket. Most people think that they can't actually enforce these things. Most people seem to think, at least the most people that are against this, um, seem to think that the strategy here is hand out these tickets, dole them out. A lot of people will pay them. Um, and they're not going to get to court for two years. So what's what difference does it make? Because once the courts reopen right here, they're online only. They're Zoom courts and they're super backlogged. So whenever this is all over, they have to get to the, the real lawsuits, the real court charges. And then they're going to have what? A couple thousand um, ticket cases. I would hope at least in America, it's probably going to be hundreds of thousands. But then they're either going to settle them and say, oh, it wasn't actually 
uh, overriding your your freedoms, or let's just throw them out because it's been too long and we can't uh, clog up the court system. That seems to be what is most likely to most people, and what I tend to lean towards is we can get people to to go along with these orders that don't actually have bearing in face of the Constitution. Nothing can override that in my country or yours. So let's just get people to comply as much as they can, and when push comes to shove and we actually have to address these things, we can just throw them out because people did what we wanted them to do for two years anyways. Do you guys get that feeling, or do you, do you think there's, there's a, another way that the government can actually end up forcing this? I don't know if they're how they're going to... Well, there's a handful of ways they could enforce it, or force, force it on people, but I just want to say that this is not surprising to me at all. I mean, look at the chain of events, right? What was it, a week or so ago we had Fauci saying that, remember, okay, first of all, he moved the goalposts on herd immunity. It was 60%, then it was 75, then it was 85 or 90 or whatever it is. Yeah, so yeah, now it's 90. So they're continuing to inch up and then he goes out and says, well, now by, by spring, by summer, we need to have the kids vaccinated. So, and, and, and Andrew Cuomo, which really triggers me, your favorite guy. Um, my favorite person on the planet saying that um, that the, the, the poor communities of color, the black and Latinos of New York just need to get over it. So that to me signals. And so all of, all of those things happened before Johnson & Johnson said that it's going to be annual. So to me, it was just a gradual progression and they're going to milk it. I mean, right? Like it's, it's a money play. Like, and, and I ask myself this all the time. Is it money? Is it? power is it just like what is it really in right now today i'm thinking it's money because with the 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 progression that's happened it of course it culminates and you have to get this every single year it doesn't really work they told you it doesn't really work you still got to wear a mask in fact you got to wear two you can't travel <laughs> you still got a social distance you still got to get tested and you have to get the vaccine every year it's at this point it sounds like a money play but i could be wrong 